their life and being in their space necessarily. I was lucky and learned the lesson, really, the lesson he was talking about, really, because we all learned it eventually, I hope. Learned it really early. I was my oldest daughter was 11. Started to play select. And I didn't even know what it was. She started to play. So I had his buddy at, at uh, work, who was 10 years older than me. And he was six six and uh, played basketball in Cleveland when he grew up. And, and I would tell him the stories about the club weekends and my kid. And he could tell I was that guy. And so he tells me a story one day on the way to lunch. He says, man, when I played basketball in college, in high school, I was high point man, 20, board, 20 points, 10 boards. But every on the ride home, my dad would just rip me, rip me every game, just rip me. And he said, by the time I was a junior, and, and he's telling me this story, but I'm not getting it, you know. But he said, by the time I was a junior, I didn't want to play the game I loved ever again, he said. And I, I still didn't know what he was saying. I didn't get it. And, he, and I turned and I said, you know, why didn't you want to play? What are you talking about? He said, I just wanted my dad to love me. That's all I wanted. You know, and I'm like, ooh, he's telling me because I'm that guy. And so I went home and told my wife the story. And I said, we're never talking about the game, the piano lessons, the anything but school. We're never talking about it again once we leave the ballpark. Leave it at the ballpark. It doesn't, you know, and so I tell this story to all our young coaches and all our young parents. Leave your kid alone. Let them play. Let them enjoy it. And it's time to make notes if you need to. When it's time to practice, then go to practice and practice it. But when the game's over, leave it alone. And so I was able to adopt that philosophy early. And so not that I didn't backslide periodically, right? Sometimes I wanted it more than they did. And so I would slip back into dad mode where I was, you know, had these high expectations. I never forget. When she got to college, I was so happy and relaxed I didn't have to coach her because, you know, she's in college and I'm not the coach. It's awesome, right? But then after the her sophomore year, they went to the World Series. You know, she did well there and she was on the top 50 watch list. And so the next year as a junior, my expectations got stupid, right? But I wanted it more than she did. And I'll never forget we were playing OU and, you know, Rick is just wearing our butt out. and, and um, you know, we get run ruled again. And uh, that night at dinner, she's there with the left. All the slappers are there eating, me and my wife and the slappers. And we're not in the conversation, but I'm here and they're talking. And they're like, man, I wish Coach Moore would just battle the right handers because we left handers can't hit that kid, right? And I'm like, my head's exploding, right? And I'm thinking, you guys are losers if that's how you think. I just can't believe it. <clears throat> and so that night, we got back to drop her off in her car and I just let her have it. And I just said, hey, if you. If you were acting like this in the classroom, I would wear you out about this attitude. If you think you've lost, you're going to lose, your, you know, whatever. So I yell at her. She's, you know, she gets, the, she knows better than to say anything back to me. So she gets in the car and is screaming at her top of her lungs as she drives away. <clears throat> it's a bit of a watershed moment. I, you know, I don't sleep at all that night. She doesn't either. We reconcile the next day, but that was the moment where I backslid and I wanted it more than she did. After that, I finally realized, you know, just. Just let her play. What difference does it make? You know, we win the name, we win the game the next day, and she scores the only run of the game. So, you know, the point was I wanted it too bad. And you had parents, dads, moms, you gotta let that stuff go. You can't, it doesn't matter in the end, right? I just wanted her to love me, right? She just wanted me to love her. So, you know, that was the daddy-daughter experience. I kept going because the idea of having a positive impact on lots of young people turned out to be the most, still is the most rewarding thing I've done besides raise my own kids, right? So every year we have the chance to have this amazing impact on hundreds of girls, you know, and help them be better humans. I mean, I have kids on my team who, can, who are old enough to vote. It scares the crap out of them, right? But when you think about it like that, I mean, we better help them be the best version of themselves they can be better help them be good human beings, right? If we send kids off to UCLA and they're turds, we're losing, right? That's not, we need them to go where they can go and have a good experience and be the best humans they can be and turn around and contribute to society. That's, for me, what it's all about. And that's why I continue to do it. And that's why, you know, I, we never talk about winning. We just talk about being your best version of yourself. And hopefully that translates into winning.